Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. And I am back today with another resin project. So today we are jumping into the holiday season and I'm going to be showing you how to take acrylic ornament blanks and add resin backdrops. So I ordered a set of 12 blanks. So we have five different um, displays, backgrounds, combinations to choose from. I did go ahead and leave some blank as well. I am using these particular blanks for an upcoming class in a Cricut Craft Fest. So I will be showing you in the Craft Fest how to add all of the adorable Cricut SVGs to these blanks. I will leave a link for that down below. If you want to join us, we would love to have you. But for today, we are simply going to be adding all of the resin backdrops. So we are doing some geode inspired. We are doing some that are clear resin or opaque resin, depending on what you're looking for. I did a slightly red and a pink. We are doing some that have a solid resin on the bottom with a glitter overlay. We are doing some alcohol ink. And dun -dun -dun -dun, we are doing some solid resin. Those are a whole separate video, so I will link to that below as well but it's five different techniques. So if you would like to follow along, we will show you how to make all of these. The solid glitter is the last one. I knew I was missing something. We are going to get started. It is actually a pretty quick and easy project. We are going to be mixing our resin all together and then splitting the resin into multiple colorways that you can use a combination of to make all of these at the same time. I think it literally took me an hour to set up and an hour to make all of these ornaments. So, you know, let's get started. All right, y'all, so let's get started with our little acrylic blanks that we are going to add our resin backdrops to. So I have five, five, not 10, five separate um, kind of backdrops or fronts laid out three sets of two on this pan and a set of two in this pan. And we are going to add resin either to the back or to the front of each of these blanks so that we can then add Cricut vinyl to them and make them really cute ornaments. But when you get these little acrylic blanks, whatever you're going to use them for, you can see there's scratches on the back. That is because there's a clear plastic protective film on both sides. So I've gone ahead and I've removed that film from the front of all of these. I left one set to show you. So here it is with the film on both sides. Those bugs, y'all. And it is kind of a opaque film, so you can kind of see it here. So in order to remove that, you're gonna take your thumb on top, your forefinger on the bottom, and rub those edges together like scissors. There you go. And you will get that film up easy peasy Usually doesn't cut quite like that, but it's definitely coming. You don't want to scratch the surface, so this typically works perfect. It's just not going to do it while I'm on camera, because why would it? So once you get that film off, your surface is clean. It is dust free, ready for resin. So make sure you do this right before you pour your resin. You don't want anything to get on the surface while you're waiting. And we'll do the other side. This one worked perfectly. That's what it's supposed to do. So as you can see, I have everything laid out because once you mix your resin and we are working with Maker Poxy, this is a Total Boat resin by Jess Crow, who is awesome. But I love this. It is easy to work with for beginners, super fun to use, but mainly it is a nice, safe, easy, epoxy that you can use even if you don't know much about epoxy it is a one-to-one -one ratio so you're going to use one part of a and one part of b for all your pieces and we are going to add that to all our blanks so what i like to do since i work as you might be able to tell on my front porch resin is toxic even if it's fun to use so i don't use it inside because i have little tiny puppies inside um you want a well ventilated space and you want something like a respirator, gloves, something to keep yourself safe. 
once you have your safety equipment on, I like to use a, this is literally a cookie pan, um, with a silicone sheet inside. The silicone means that if I get resin all over my surface, it will be easy cleanup. And the baking pan means that I can lift this whole tray up, take it inside to set aside to cure without having to leave it outside where any kind of wind or dirt or dust or debris could get onto my pieces. So if you don't have to transport your things, you're working in a craft room behind a closed door with well ventilation, well ventilation with good ventilation, then you are good to go. You might not need this. You can work directly on some freezer paper or a silicone sheet. But since I'm working outside, I like to use a baking pan. Second, I have just a few little measuring cups under each of my pieces. That way, as we put the resin on, if any drips off the sides, it's not going to um, glue the pieces to the silicone and leave us an edge we have to sand off. It will just go straight down onto the silicone sheet, leaving us a drip-free, pretty ornament blank that we can add our Cricut vinyl to. So we are going to get started. And in order to get started, I am going to have to put my respirator on and my gloves. So give me a second and then voiceover Betsy will be back in action. Okay, so before I start mixing my resin, I'm going to pick up my tray and move it aside. And now I'm going to prep my colors. So I'm going to do six colors. So I'm going to put six little smidgy mabobbers out. I am going to do some mica powders. So these are mica powders from Total Boat. They're their black diamond collection. They're amazing. So I'm going to do one, two, three of those. I am going to do a chunky rose gold glitter. I'm going to do a fine rose gold glitter. And I'm going to do a blush pink because I could not find, I think I used it all, my pink mica powder from my last project. So pink does work. Mica powder is preferred, but you know, sometimes you use what you got. So we are going to put a little bit of each of these things in our cups, and then we are going to prep our alcohol inks. So for this project, I am going to use white for sure. That is clear, so I'm going to have to grab a white. Thought I had one out here. Let's use this pink. Let's use this one. And let's use a purple. That'll be a pretty mix. I like to do things when I'm doing ornaments, especially that are all in the same color family. All right. So now I'm just going to grab my little spatulas. These are silicone so that they're easy for cleanup. I can use them over and over, but you can use popsicle sticks. I'm going to go ahead. I probably should have done this before I put my gloves on because it's just easier, but... I'm not gonna worry about it. If I need new gloves, I'll get new gloves. All right. Don't need much since we're not mixing much. There we go. We'll just go ahead and put a little in each pot. Okay, being in Alabama, y'all, it's not hot today. You want to mix resin on a day that is not too hot, not too cold, but it is humid. It's humid today. So those gloves were making my hands too uh, funky to open these plastic bags. It's not a normal problem, but that's fine. Why not? There we go. And honestly, that is probably a little much for these little pots, but it's, it's hard to get less. There we go. You want about 10% pigment to your resin. We do want more glitter because we want solid, chunky glitter. Chunky. You can always add more. But once you start mixing your resin, you're on the clock. So anything that you can do beforehand, like add colorants to your containers, is definitely helpful. I 
I just made a huge mess. It's fine. That's why glitter is glitter. Not sure why I thought that would help. Okay, so now we have our alcohol inks. I've got my white. I've got all of my pigments ready to roll. I've got my handy dandy heat gun that I'll use to pop my bubbles. I've got a few silicone spreaders for spreading resin across the front of the resin blanks or the back of the acrylic resin blanks. I've got some larger mixing cups. So we'll use these to mix our base resin and then we'll pour it into the smaller cups and got my safety gear. So now that I'm actually set up, gloves go on, respirator goes on, the real voiceover Betsy steps in. We're gonna get started. We're gonna mix about 100 milliliters. So let's see, here we go. So right here on the side, that's 100 milliliters in this cup. I was going to use this cup, but actually that's all the way down here. So we're gonna go ahead and go with one of these cups. We're gonna mix 100 milliliters, and then we'll pour about 10 in each of these, mix those, and then we can add a little bit more to any of them that need it or any colorant to any of them that need it. So we'll add 50 part A, 50 part B, to this cup, we will thoroughly mix for three minutes, making sure to scrape the bottom and the sides of the container, and then we'll pour, mix these containers, and then we will start to do our resin. Now, once, once we mix, we are on the clock, the resin will start to harden, so we'll have to work fast. And we will leave the last bit in here clear for our alcohol ink ornaments. So a little bit of clear, a little bit of colors, a little bit of fun. Let's roll. All right, y'all, now that we're done mixing, let's get started pouring. So we're gonna put our little tray in and we're going to start on the left here with our solid resin ornaments. So for this, I'm simply using resin mixed with that paint and one mixed with the mica powder. And I'm going to spread that on the back. I'm gonna do the glitter ones at the same time because it's the same technique. We're just using two resins, one mixed with fine glitter, one mixed with chunky glitter. So once we pour it on, we'll use our heat gun to pop those bubbles and then use your spatula to spread it to the edges. You can see it does kind of make divots in the resin, but it will self level as it dries and you can use your heat gun to push it around a little bit more using that spatula to get a piece of glitter or dust off the surface there. So we're just gonna keep going through spread it out, make sure you're going over all the pieces all the way to the edge. Perfect. Now the glitter is a little harder because you can't get 100% coverage when you put the glitter directly in the resin. So your options are to put glitter in your resin or 
to pour glitter over your resin and you can see I'm going to do one of each. So I've put the glitter in the resin. I'm also going to go ahead and pour some on top. Most of that overspray I'll be able to put back in the bottle. So now on the last two, I'm going to do a mix of the first two techniques. I'm going to add glitter to the top like it is raining down from the top of those ornaments. And then I am going to hit it with my heat gun. The heat gun pops the bubbles, but it also helps it to self level all the way to the edges. So it's very important that you use a heat gun as a torch would really melt those acrylic blanks in a way that we do not want. Needed a little bit more blush uh, resin. So now we're gonna add that to the bottom and we're going to merge the two while spreading it all the way to the bottom of those ornaments. Perfect. Hit them with the heat, hit them with the heat. Don't hit them with too much heat. As you start to see it heat up, the resin will start to move towards the sides. You don't want it to overflow the sides too much. You want it to really stay on the top. Now we're gonna do our second two, and these two are a little more complex. So we're gonna use our resin colors for these geode inspired ones to make geode shapes. I like to start with my solid colors and then use stripes of the darker veins across the top. Again, if you need some more, just keep mixing. I just don't like to have too much of one color and not enough of another. So I find it's best to kind of mix more as I need it. You can also use your spatula to uh, kind of make thinner veins if you need to, like here. I'm using this with the fine point glitter just to add it to the edges of that chunky glitter. Perfect, so now I'm going to use the white and I am going to just kind of fill in the backs anywhere where there's holes in that geode pattern, I'm going to cover it with the white. Now I'm going to heat everything up. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, the dogs really liked these geode ornaments. Now we are going to leave those to dry and we are going to move on to our last one, which is our alcohol ink. So for this, we're going to simply spread clear resin all the way to the edges. Perfect. And then we are going to add drops of alcohol ink to the surface. So when you do this, be conscientious that these two are the front of our design is actually on the front of the ornament. So right now what we're seeing is the back of the design. Shake up your alcohol ink. We're going to drop it onto our resin, adding white alcohol ink and drops to the center. You're just gonna keep layering those three colors until you get a design you like. But be conscientious that as you add it, they're going to keep interacting, they're going to keep mixing, these kind of splotches that you see is not what's going to stay. So if you're not sure what you like, just give it a couple seconds, it will change. All right, so it's been a couple days and I wanted to show you how each ornament turned out. So here's the clear one and you can see it, the uh, resin does drip down and it can pool on the other side a little bit or sometimes on the edges. So that's specifically why I didn't take the clear film off the backside in case there was any resin. But the front looks perfect on that one. I actually like how this one, I left kind of some swirls and different like gradients instead of mixing the color in perfectly. Like I wanted this one to be solid. I wanted them both to be solid, but depending on how much mica powder you add, you can get a really, really solid color or you can get a really translucent, swirly kind of pattern. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Now with something like this, I'll probably put my Cricut vinyl right on the top of the resin. But for something like this, where I ended up adding my glitter to the top to get a really opaque look. I will add my Cricut vinyl to this side and then you will just see all of that glitter from the back. Probably we'll see once I take the film off. I'll either do this one on this side 
or this side. And if you want to check that out, I'm actually going to be adding all of the vinyl. I have a whole bunch of SVGs to all of these and a class I'm doing with the Cricut Summit this year. So I will leave that link down below, but it is a fun collaboration with a bunch of other Cricut makers. I think there's like 30 classes and they're all free on this specific day. And I will leave all of the details down below, but see all of this pooling that will come off when we take that film off. So you can come put vinyl on all these ornaments with me and you can make any of the other 30 crafts. They're all Cricut crafts. I think is kind of a fun collaboration. I was not sure about these when I kept adding the ink because alcohol ink does what it wants. It's going to react differently every time. But typically, and I'll, I'll link down below, I have a specific tutorial on just how to do alcohol inks. You're gonna add your color and then you're gonna drop white in the center of it to help that color drop to the bottom. And so then it's just gonna interact. I love how these dried. I'm gonna show you over the white. How pretty is that? I love this one. I love how dramatic it is. It's gonna be fun once we take that clear off. Oh, those are nice. And I love this one. This one is pretty, but the glitter did kind of go everywhere. Which isn't terrible, just not as defined as this one. Now you'll notice I do have a um, twist tie or you can use a toothpick. So once everything had cured for just a couple minutes and I moved into the bathroom, I just went through and uh, I, I pushed my twist tie through all the tops here to make sure that the resin was clear and we could still use those ornament hole hangers. But if you forget to do that, you can always like this one, even though I did that, it is still not perfect. You can always go in. I'll just go in with an attachment on my Dremel and drill that out. You can also just use a drill bit. It's not going to hurt anything. Ooh, I really like that one. I like that they all coordinate. But that was kind of my goal. So, you know, imagine that. All right. So I hope you guys liked this project. It was really quick and easy. I mixed everything and I poured everything. And honestly, about took about an hour to, to pour all of these. Um, and that's mainly because I have to set up my workstation each and every time I do a project. But they turn out great. I have a whole set of them now. And if you want to check out all the fun SVGs during that Cricut Summit, I will leave the link below and you can come and join us. The more the merrier. I will see you there or I will see you in the next video. Bye, y'all.